If you want to grow your business, you've got to do things a little bit differently, especially when it comes to marketing and advertising on the internet. Now, this goes for any type of media channel. The internet is just a medium, and it's just one of the many ways in which you can reach customers. But in this example, I'm going to share with you how you can do a conversion-first approach to optimize your sales, increase your profits, and grow your business. I'm Justin Hitt with Ad Briefings Copywriting Tips. If you're a copywriter, marketer, business owner, or executive, you're in the right place. We're going to talk specifically about how you can segment your audiences in order to increase your leads generated, quality leads generated, and the sales conversion. And we're going to talk about it from the perspective of your website, because that's kind of easy for a lot of folks to understand. But do bear in mind that this works whether you have folks calling in the telephone and getting a proposal and buying a complex technical service, or they're buying from your e-commerce website or any combination thereof. More importantly, because we are segmenting the audience and platform in which that audience engages with you, we can optimize per sales channel. So now you can have one, two, three, even five different sales channels and reasonably manage and optimize conversion for each of those channels. The biggest problem we have today is there are two many choices. So I also zero in on two specific metrics that you can use to grow your business and then the analysis of those metrics are used to improve your overall performance. Now when I say metrics, we are talking about measures that are normalized, quantifiable and easy to understand so that you can make accurate business decisions. Now, what does normalized mean? It means that if we're comparing two different platforms, we have a a, a rational perspective to know which contributes to leads and which contributes to sales so that we can do more of what creates results. Now, I've already kind of test, touched on it that we're using multivariant metrics. We're using multiple aspect metrics. So for example, we're not looking at impressions all by itself. We're not looking at likes or follows or just engagement. We're looking at combinations of impressions and likes for particular, particular content areas. So we end up having a source which is the content itself, the creative itself. We have a medium, which is the platform that it's on. And then we have some kind of campaign, which is the larger context of the offers and the different elements of what it is the customer is going to engage with. And I say customers because this is very important. Too many marketers, business owners, executives, even copywriters make the mistake of writing very good marketing campaigns for the wrong audience. If someone's got hemorrhoids and you're offering them fungal cream, they aren't going to buy no matter how good the campaign is, no matter how good the offer is, no matter how well you present the fungal cream, they've got hemorrhoids. And I don't mean to be rude, but sometimes we've got to go in there and just be honest about what we're doing. Too often we chase vanity metrics like the number of impressions, the visitors to the website, how many people are on our Facebook channel, how many people are on TikTok, and that allows us to be taken advantage of by the hype. You know the hype I'm talking about, where they say Facebook is the platform that you've got to be on for business, Twitter's the platform, TikTok's the platform. There's so many platforms, like I said, there's an unlimited number of choices in the marketplace, and each of these channels are vying for your attention. They're vying for your marketing dollars. How do we know which marketing channel is the one that's going to generate more sales, more profits, and more long-term value to your business? Now, when I go through these different channels, I want you to grab a sheet of paper and I, and I, and I want you to think about this in your head. What are the channels that lead to business in your organization. Not the channels you want to chase, but right now today, what channels create sales? And I'm going to give you a little bit of background about where I'm coming from. I am a direct response marketer. That means that each of these channels, if I'm going to focus content, if I'm going to focus attention, if I'm going to take the time to buy ads, if I'm going to go ahead and and let people on that channel know what it is that I have to offer, I want to know that that channel works in a direct and responsive way. What do I mean by that? That means, am I generating leads? Now, a lead is someone who asks for additional information at your website. They could be called an inquirer. 
they're asking about a specific product or service or they ha uh, or they've expressed to you they have a specific problem that you could possibly solve for and Buyers. These are customers, people who have made a decision to give you money for something, and they are the customers, the clients, the patients. They are the person who is who you serve in the business. See, you don't work for Google. You don't work for Facebook. You don't work for some kind of search engine. You are a self-employed or a business owner or an executive, the master of your own domain. But here's the problem. All of these platforms distract from the key important value of the business. It, it, that key important value is the equity you create in customers through their votes for what it is that they want in your business. So how does the customer, the client, the patient, how do they vote in your business to tell you what they want to buy and what they don't want to buy? Well, they do it through their dollars. Now, if you're running an international business and you've got dollars, pesos, you know, yen, uh, renminbi, again, it's the it's the monetary behavioral diff change that shows you the difference between what works and what doesn't. That's the foundation of what we're going to talk about here. Now, I said there are many audience channels, places where customers exist today that you would love to have buying your products and services. And if you know who is a customer, we can build out a buyer persona. We can build out a customer avatar. And now when we approach these channels, we're a little bit better off than what you were before. But my background is multi-channel marketing. And in back in the day, it was mail order, fax orders. It was uh, email, internet, uh, a storefront, a lot of different things. So I've worked with Lillian Vernon, which is one of the biggest catalog companies. Uh, uh, they they sell consumer goods. I've worked with Auto Trader that has a, a catalog website. I've worked with Dominion Enterprises. I've worked with a lot of different e-commerce companies, but I've also sold petroleum services directly, fuel services directly, and commodity uh, fuel and petroleum product directly. I've also sold other products and services, including technical services, uh, engineering services, government contracting. The key is, though, that there's always different places where your prospects exist and live today. And if you can avoid the siren song of chasing the latest and greatest platform, we can put in place key metrics that help us understand where customers come from, where leads come from. This is called our lead and sales attribution. And now we can start focusing our, our limited advertising budget on key places where if we place the right offer, like I said in the example, if they've got hemorrhoids and you send them a, fung a toe fungal advertisement, they're not going to buy. But if you know who has hemorrhoids and you offer them a hemorrhoid cream, you're going to be so much ahead of the game. Now, we can also start doing product development because if they've got hemorrhoids, they can have a cream, they can have a home remedy, they can have a doctor's visit, they can have so many different things. So, Let's talk about segments, okay? We're going to stop being rude, and we're going to talk about segments. There are specific buyer segments or stages in the buying process. See, we're not selling the way we want to sell. We're helping facilitate the buying engagement, and that's very important to write down. And so when we're talking about the different channels in which customers can come to your website, in this example, or your storefront, or call you on the telephone, we want to know where these customers exist today, and then we want to engage with them in a meaningful way, get them to come to our website, get them to call our business, and then based on who purchases, we want to adjust our front end. This is really a funnel. So on the very front of the funnel, we have our prospects, people who match our customer avatar, who match the buyer persona, but who are not yet engaged in a buying relationship with our organization. These prospects live on Google, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, Rumble, BitChute, uh, you know, Apple Podcasts. <laughs> they're, they're, they're the public people on your website. They're at Reddit. They're at TikTok. Can you see how difficult this can be? Now, when you work with an agency, they can specialize in these different channels. They can, they can do a lot of different things. 
my agency is conversion oriented first. So I don't really care which channel your prospects live. I want them to take a step towards your products and services to step up to your offers and become inquirers asking specifically how you might be able to help sol- help them solve specific problems. Now there's a keynote, there's a key here. You want to help them solve problems and sometimes we have to help them solve small problems in order to get their name, their email address, their telephone number, maybe their postal address or to otherwise qualify them as a marketing lead before we make an offer. Now, this is very important because if you don't know what the problem is that your prospects face, wherever those prospects live online, then how will you get them involved in what it is that you have to offer? See, you've got the toe fungal cream with people who don't have toe fungus. Now, the toe fungal cream goes to athletes. It goes to uh, people who do outdoor sports, people who wear shoes, people who are in situations where they may have certain types of symptoms. What are the symptoms for your products and services that you can can put out as lead magnets or other types of trip wires or triggers in the prospecting realm so that when they click a link, when they engage, now let's not confuse an impression as engagement. Let's not confuse a like as an engagement. Let's not even confuse a follow as an engagement. When they click a link and come to your website or pick up the phone and call your office, then they become an inquiry. You may not be aware, but you can tag from the prospecting realm to the inquiry realm different types of universal tags that help you know what it was the source. Remember we said source is the creative the medium is the channel or platform, and then the campaign gives us information about what types of offers. Now, there are other tr- keys, and there's tracking software, and all that stuff is important, but it isn't the key of what we're, we're trying to determine here, is that where did that lead come from? So someone's going to get on your site, and they're going to inquire from you by asking a question, by requesting a special report, by downloading a certain inf- piece of information, by watching a video and providing their contact information. This is incredibly important. How do you know you have an inquirer? Because they have given you information. Now, yes, I know you can tag individuals or pixel individuals who have certain types of behaviors and, and, and it starts to put them on lists. And we want to be building mailing lists in our in our prospecting world, but we want to build mailing lists of individuals who have expressed a certain uh, interest through a behavior because we know and you know that there's tits and ass all over Google, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the thirst traps on Pinterest, YouTube, and other public websites. We know there's spam out there. And until that person who sees your uh, piece of content, your short video, your podcast, your uh, offer, Uh, And again, we don't necessarily want to be throwing offers out there that have monetary decisions because we don't know enough about that individual until they opt into your website. Now, before they buy from your products and service, we might, might need a little bit more information. Many of my clients sell complex technical services, accounting or, or professional services. They sell medical services or other types of complex opportunities, many times high ticket opportunities, and just having the email is not enough. We need an email and then some kind of prospect survey so we can churn them in our own platform. This is very important because in many environments, once they inquire, we go from an unlimited number of platforms to just a few. And in this case, uh, for the example that I've written down here, and by the way, my notes here are available on a PDF if you would, uh, if you write in, if you visit www.adbriefings.co.uk, go to the contact page and ask about uh, combining social analytics or uh, conversion rate optimization and we can get you a copy of what I'm looking at right here because I understand on many channels this will be Um, this will be just audio. And so when they're an inquiry on your website and they've opted in or they've made a telephone call, you're going to have limited information about these individuals. But if they're in your customer relationship management system, 
in your marketing automation system or some other kind of platform where you could follow up on that individual, you could send them an email that asks them to complete a survey. This is called a prospect survey. We're building a catalog of their interests and desires. And this, we have to understand privacy is dead today. But this helps us better understand the individuals who have have asked for information. Now, again, there are analytics and insights on every one of those prospecting channels. You can go to Facebook Insights and see demographic information. You can go to Twitter Insights and see what posts people engage with. There's so much information there, but, but we have to narrow it down. And we narrow it down by the behavior of the prospect who visits the website and becomes an inquiry so that we can make relevant offers. Now, there are two more layers here, but we have to understand that once someone is a lead, and this is very important, then we can offer them something specific to their need. So let's say you're a pharmaceutical company or you offer natural uh, healing solutions and you have someone who comes to the website and specifically tells you that they have hemorrhoids, not necessarily just saying, I have hemorrhoids, doctor, how can you help me? They might be going to specific content related to hemorrhoids. They might be going, I know folks, bear with me. This is, I have to be dramatic with this so that you'll get this because too many people are distracted by the siren song of cool analytics and dashboards when it really is leads and sales that matter. But if somebody identifies they're interested or they have the problem of hemorrhoids, now you can make specific offers to them privately based on the medium that you have available the email, the phone, the uh, the fact that they're attending a webinar, and ultimately you can make specific offers and they'll make a decision. But then the toe fungus guys aren't being distracted by the hemorrhoid guys and the toe fungus people are getting specific toe fungus offers. So remember, my experience is direct response marketing and channels. So we're going to take people from Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're going to get them on an email mailing list that asks them additional questions and builds out a contextual profile that sub-segments these individuals into buying cohorts. And then within that buying cohort, which now we're deep down inside the funnel. By the way, if this doesn't make sense, please ask your questions because this is the fundamental of advertising. This isn't branding. This isn't you know getting getting exposure. This isn't wasting your advertising dollars. This is drilling down to buyers, people in the marketplace who have a problem that they want to pay money to solve and that they're in the right place so that you can make a specific offer to these individuals and the automation of your inquiry funnel or your lead funnel is going to sift, sort, and qualify. So now you can focus all of your attention on people who are pre-qualified to buy, not pre-qualified to get more information from your website, not pre-qualified to, to attend another webinar that's expensive to produce, but ready to buy. And then you can make specific offers to these individuals. And that is your buyer, buyer tier. Now, again, we can segment this by uh, initial platform. We can segment this by content or topic. We can segment this by your product line. We can segment this by the types of services that you have. We can segment this by the types of problems your prospect has. But again, it's a funnel that goes from prospect to inquiry to buyer. Now, if you really want to be clever about this, don't be clever in the latest creative. Be clever on how you're tagging these individuals, how you're cooking these individuals, and maybe even how you're getting some kind of initial sale to get their full contact information and then following up on your back end, which is your sales funnel in order to get repeat purchases. Now, if we've done this right, we can optimize for conversion using the information we know about repeat buyers and then go back to the original platforms of prospects and narrow our focus using advertising in order to zero in on people who have problems and who want to solve those problems because they have the money They have the desire, they have the authority, they have all the buying criteria. See, when I was going door to door in industrial parts selling diesel fuel, I would knock on a door of only those people who had fleet vehicles. That means vans and trucks with the company name and logo on it. It made my life easy because I could see the truck around town and call the phone number on the truck and say, how many vehicles do you have? And they would say five vehicles. And I'd say, great, 
it sounds like I can save you money on your gasoline and diesel fuel. Is that something you're interested in? And they would say, yes, I'm interested in. When can you show up? See, they were literally inviting me to pitch them on a commodity product, a not very exciting commodity product, a commodity product that's on every street corner, but they would invite me into their business, they would invite me to their uh, uh, meetings, and then I could invite them to events and offer them a specific solution for their problems, and they were very happy. I sold millions of dollars of gasoline and diesel fuel one gallon at a time by finding highly qualified individuals who could make buying decisions who had problems I could solve and so when we're looking at today's digital marketing world you have to understand all these distractions are so far removed from the actual conversion of a person who has problems who can make decisions into Something that's going to alleviate alleviate the pain and suffering they have. Now, this is where the context comes in. We write our buyer personas based on buyers, not people who are tire kickers, not people who are interested. Somebody who wants to save a couple dollars a month because they've got one company vehicle was not a prospect of someone selling fleet services. They can afford to drive down two more blocks to go to a different gas station. They didn't have the risk of fuel theft. They didn't have the problem with drivers getting stuck in a convenience store, talking to the nice young lady at the counter and wasting their time because they're paid by the hour. They didn't have the problems that I could solve with a simple commodity solution applied in an appropriate way. If you feel like your products and services are commoditized or you're in a highly competitive market and you're not focusing on repeat buyers and you're not tagging those repeat buyers or cooking those repeat buyers or using the data services that are available to to drill down and, and literally clone your very best buyers by appending to your list, by doing audience matching in your list, or by doing the other things, then the only result you will have is slugging through social media channels, slugging through search engine optimization, wasting money on creating content that nobody's going to look at, or being new, being clever. And you're going to be a, just like the thoughts and the other attention whores online screaming, look at me, look at me, I can solve problems, rather than having conversations with highly qualified prospects who can buy your products and services. Now again, if you're in a commodity world and you're the right aid on the corner and you've got toe fungus and you've got condoms and you've got anal creams and you've got hemorrhoid creams and you've got candies at the front register, that's a different business and God bless you for being in it because there are people with problems in the marketplace. But if you're selling five-figure high-ticket services such as copywriting and marketing services, if you're selling legal services and solutions for big problems in business, if you're selling IT services, I used to sell IT integration services, which would include the acquisition of computers and the installation. Why would we just sell them a computer when we could help them install it and configure their network and install network drops and help them solve the problems in the business? If you're selling five-figure transactions where you have customer lifetime values that are in the millions, then you must understand. And by the way, if you don't have customer lifetime values in the millions, this is how you get there. It is multi-channel, direct response marketing, focusing on measuring the leads and sales, building out attribution maps, building out content maps that are relevant to buyers, and then going back into the advertising space and just skipping the line. We're literally, instead of posting new content every day, we're skipping the line and getting maximum attention of target prospects because we've paid for access. Now, I know a lot of you guys don't want to pay for access. You've got anemic marketing budgets. Your advertising budgets are not replenished every month. There, You don't have marketing reserves so that you can jump on an opportunity. And that's because you don't have the audience segmentation of prospects, inquirers, buyers, and repeat customers. And it's because you don't have platform tagging so that you can understand where your customers are. And it's because you don't have the analytics in place to test different marketing channels. I said YouTube, Rumble, BitChute. 
You might not even know what Rumble and BitChute is. You might think it's a conservative cesspool, as you've been told in the liberal media. But the truth of it is, is that videos that work on YouTube also work on Rumble and BitChute, and it's different audiences. These different audiences in in video marketing channels, you wouldn't know work unless you've got a funnel in place that generates leads and generates customers and now can attribute within a narrow scope of platforms who is engaged, what are their problems and challenges, who are the decision makers, do they even have a budget, and then again making specific offers so that you can get them on board with what it is that you have to offer. We want to determine what creates our inquiry and promote that at the prospect level. We want to target the content, audience, and offer, then pixel so we know about conversion because the conversion is going to be something that is meaningful to a name on a list or a monetary transaction. Now, there are other things that we can track that have to do with events, that have to do with opt-ins and different things to help build those audiences in the platforms. Because if you do figure out that that Facebook is converting a lot of customers in a specific area, we can go back and amplify that. But again, if you're distracted by the Google, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, Rumble, BitChute, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, the thousands of different platforms that are available on the front end that are constantly screaming for attention because they, uh, they need a commodity audience, you're going to miss the fact that we can, we can generate a lead and then really get to understand that lead. And, and that allows us to sell a higher ticket solution to a number of people who are highly qualified to buy and then ultimately improve the quality of leads, generate more sales, produce the improve the profitability of your business and start restoring those advertising dollars. So that's what I'm going to leave you with right now. When I say go back and advertise instead of creating more content or or trying to do something free or trying to be a cheap bastard, I know that you can buy the advertising because you're buying speed. It takes time for you to create content. You might even be paying staff to create content. And content creation is fun. It's exciting to be creative. But you don't want to wait six months. You don't want to have a sales cycle that takes 20 days or 90 days or 80 days. If you know something about who is a qualified buyer for your service, you can test your understanding by making certain types of lead offers in front of those people and you can jump to the front of the line and skip the 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 slowness that has to do with organic traffic that has to do with uh you know gaining engagement and simply make an ab split offer and say hey you've got hemorrhoids we've got a solution click here for more information it really is that simple. And now your toe fungus ads go to people with toe fungus and your, uh, your uh, hemorrhoid cream goes to those with hemorrhoids. And again, I am, am really blunt about this because it is that simple. We don't need to distract it. We don't need to be uh, sensitive to their issues and needs because we're now targeting specific buyer personas and customer avatars. And very often, only those people will see what we have to offer because remember all of these platforms sell advertising all of these platforms give preference to advertisers all of these platforms want you to come back as an advertiser so rather than being a consumer of these platforms rather than being the the free contractor that works for these platforms that doesn't get compensated you now become their customers and with the methodology that we're talking about here for optimization You're now able to say, I've got $1,000 today, and I'm going to spread it over these platforms, and I'm going to focus my money on the platforms that make me new money, and that new money is going to replenish your original $1,000, and next thing you know, you can spend an incredible amount of money to get a new customer because you have high customer net worth, high customer lifetime value, you have lower cost per sale, you have higher transaction amounts, and we're now measuring that with fuel your tools and testing in these other environments and folks if you don't get this right now and your competitor understands this they'll be able to pay 10 to 15 times your cost per lead i had a client that paid twenty seven thousand dollars per lead now again they're selling multi-million dollar services but it scales maybe you're spending fifty dollars to get a lead right now 
and you can afford to spend $500 to get a lead and your competitor thinks they can only spend 50, who is going to buy up all the leads in a short term? Because remember, the just because they're interested in something doesn't mean they're ready to buy today. And that's why we do the lead so we can follow up in our own media. Uh, but folks, if you don't understand this or you even have a question or maybe you think I'm telling you something that's completely wrong and you want to challenge what we're saying here, raise your hand and ask a question. If we were in a room and we pulled up your analytics and we started segmenting your marketing funnels and your sales funnels and we had this all drawn out on a whiteboard, you would realize how much money you're wasting and how we could take that waste and reinvest it in new customers in new profits and start getting a return on our advertising spend, start getting a return on our investment of time, resources, and attention. And you would realize what bullshit these brand agencies are putting up in front of you, what kind of bullshit the platforms themselves are telling you. When you get a postcard in the mail asking you to advertise on Google AdWords or Google AdSense, or to use these ad platforms and you're holding a postcard in your hand and they're telling you how important digital ma- marketing is and they're telling you how valuable it is to have impressions on their environment, it doesn't click that they're using a postcard that they had sales reps call you because, again, they're they're selling the sexy. They're selling the sizzle. I'm about hardcore direct response accountable advertising, knowing what works and what doesn't, and then focusing those ad dollars not where we have the greatest reach, not where we have the greatest engagement, not where we can be seen by other people. Now, if you've got shareholders, there's some value in brand advertising, but the majority of my customers are $5 million and bigger. They have hardcore technical services, professional services. They're delivering something that is tangible, They're delivering a five-figure, a six-figure, even seven-figure services, and they don't have time to play against the Unilevers, the Amazons, the large companies that can dump millions of dollars a day into their advertising because all they've got to do is excite the shareholders in order to get their more investment dollars, and they don't have to make a profit. But if you've got to make a profit to pay for your kid's tuition, if you've got to make a profit to to keep the lights on every day, if you've got to be able to have net results from your advertising, and you even don't, you something was unclear about this, then you need to visit www.adbriefings.co.uk. Now, we have clients around the world, and if you're interested in working with us, you have to be highly qualified. So this isn't about you telling me that you want us you want us to start optimizing your conversion. This is about making sure you understand the audience segmentation levels. Because once you understand audience segmentation levels, then we can do pixels. Then we can do link tracking. Then we can do marketing tests. Then we can do all the other clever clever things that they're trying to confuse you with. And we can know for every dollar we spend on advertising, how many dollars are we getting in sales? How many shekels? How many rubles? How many rimming B? How many how much is coming back? We can start building equity in our customers by building lists of individuals who bought specific products and services. We can start doing uh, the the different types of cross-selling. We can start now focusing our energy, time, effort, and resources on revenue generation, highly qualified leads, and building your business rather than chasing brass rings and tits and ass on social media sites because the distraction is real. They've market it they've these platforms are so good that they have monetized your attention even when they're trying to sell you their products and services so google makes money with you using their search engine whether or not you buy their advertising i want you to make money i want you to get the results i want you to build your bottom line i want you to get what you're looking for so if anything about what i've shared here today in this mini course uh, about uh, conversion rate optimization and what we're looking for in the analytics and how we're structuring our campaigns. If anything is unclear, you owe it to yourself to visit me at www.adbriefings.co.uk. Go to the contact page, 
ask for more information. There's no obligation because, again, I want to make sure I understand the problems you have, that you're qualified, that you could actually do business with us before anything else. And it costs me very little because I have a system in place and I'm willing to, to, to show you podcasts and free resources. By the way, the website is covered with a free newsletter and free free stuff. You can have all the free stuff you want. But if you're serious about increasing the sales and increasing the the profits in your business, then make sure you understand this. Listen to this uh, mini course again. Make sure you understand this because nothing has changed since the day of classified ads and newspapers. Nothing has changed since the day of door-to-door salespeople. We have to optimize our time. We have to optimize our investment of ad dollars. We need to optimize our overhead, contributed overhead related to acquiring new customers. We need to shorten sales cycles and we need to get customers who can pay, stay, and refer. I'm Justin Hit with Ad Briefings, copywriting tips where we ha- talk about words that sell, literally how to use conversations to create conversion. And then, of course, the optimization of that conversion so that we can create and keep more profitable customers. I want to thank you for being a part of this today. If you have, if you leave my voice today with questions, I, I encourage you at least email or comment or do something to try to help us understand what, where I failed and where you need a little bit additional information so that, of course, you can implement this because this is how marketing really works. This is the behind the scenes. This is the the key foundations that are necessary, whether you hire my agency or you hire somebody else's agency, in order to actually have conversion. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being a part of what we do. I'm Justin Hitt with Ad Briefings Copywriting Tips.